Hi everyone, this is Zach. Thanks for joining for another Hatha Yoga class. Today's class will be a yoga practice for energizing. And so we're in this outdoor beautiful setting today. We don't have any props here, but if you would like uh, some props at home, certainly always feel free to use those today. This practice will be one that is a little more fluid, a little more vigorous in nature, but there's still no need to overdo it, to strain or uh, overexert ourselves. We do want to feel at the end of class like we have uh, an increased amount of energy rather than feeling drained. And so it will be a little more vigorous, as I said, but we uh, don't want to go so far as to make ourselves feel tired and weary at the end of the class. We'll be flowing a little more uh, fluidly with our breaths and incorporating the breath into our movements through the class. So let's get started. Let's begin as we always do in a comfortable seated position. Always feel free to use a prop to sit on. You can sit cross-legged or come to a kneeling position. Take time to root down into the earth below you, focusing on the legs and the sits bones, making contact with the earth. Feel the body sinking down in that direction. Exhale fully and sink down. And on the following inhale, let the spine lightly expand upwards. The shoulders can lift towards the ears, give me a, a little shrug towards the ears, and then release down. Relaxing the feet, relaxing the abdomen, as well as the jaw and the tongue. And we'll chant the sound OM together three times. You can really let it be a, a vigorous OM, if you will, a resonant OM, depending on the space you're in. Inhaling. OM. Fluttering the eyes open. Let's inhale and give the arms a good stretch up, reaching towards the sky, expanding upwards, and exhale to release the arms. If you're sitting on any props, you can shift and move those to the side, and we will be making our way to a standing position at the front of the mat for some sun salutations. Finding your way to the front of the mat with the feet parallel. We'll be moving through a couple rounds, two or three rounds of sun salutations. And as I've been mentioning, it will be a little more um, fast paced, a little more vigorous. Always feel free to modify and adapt the practice in the way that's best for you. And if you perhaps start this practice and it starts to not feel right for you, certainly feel free to pause and find it another more appropriate practice for today, but we will be moving a little bit quicker today and adding uh, a few variations here and there. Exhale fully, let the weight sink down into the soles of the feet. Uh, 
Bring the palms together in front of the heart. Inhale the arms out, up and back. Press the feet down as you arch back. Exhale to release forward. The knees can be bent or straight. Uttanasana forward fold. Step the left foot back, inhale. And release the spine as the chest broadens forward. Gazing up, exhale the right foot back, downward facing dog. Heels are heavy, back of the neck neutral. Inhale forward to a plank position. Pause for a moment here, strengthening the legs and arms, engaging those inner thigh muscles, those low abdominal muscles. You can either lower knees, chest, and chin together here, or bend the elbows halfway to 90 degrees. Pause, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog or baby cobra. Soften the shoulders, arch the back, and exhale, downward facing dog. Hips high, arms straight. Inhale, the left foot forward, lunge. Release the pelvis, broaden the chest as the spine expands. Exhale, the right foot forward, forward fold. Completely release down here. Extend the arms wide. Inhale to lift out and up, arching back. Exhale, the palms together. Release the arms and inhale. Exhale, the palms together once more. Inhale, the arms out, up and back, arching, lifting the chest. Exhale to release forward, forward fold. This time the right foot steps back, lunge. Turn the back toes flat. Bring the torso upright and inhale the arms overhead, Anjaneyasana. The legs are heavy, the arms are light. Extending upwards, arching back. Release the hands down. And on the exhale, lift the back leg, straighten the front leg, stretching into the hamstring. Bring that front knee forward again, and then step back, downward facing dog. From here, pressing firmly into the hands, keeping that left foot rooted. We'll inhale the right leg out, lifting, extending. You can roll the right hip over the left, let that knee bend. We'll be drawing the knee forward to strengthen the abdominal muscles here, so bringing that right leg uh, parallel once more. Draw that knee forward towards the forehead, rounding the back. Inhale to re-extend the leg. Exhale to draw it towards the left armpit. Inhale to re-extend. And this time exhale to draw it towards the right armpit. Inhale to re-extend and lower that leg down. Pause for a moment. Now the other side. Inhale the left leg out and up, lifting. Can roll that hip over the right hip. Let the knee bend expand the left side of the body. Hands are pressing firm. Re-extending that left leg. Exhale, bend the knee towards the forehead. Inhale to re-extend. Exhale the left knee towards the left armpit. Inhale to re-extend. Exhale the left knee to the right armpit. Inhale to re-extend and exhale to lower down. From here, let's all lower knees, chest, and chin to the mat. Sliding forward, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale the right foot forward, lunge. Again, lifting the torso and arms overhead, inhale. The chest lifts. Even with the chest lifting, the back of the heart is relaxed and expansive. Notice this area. Exhale the hands down. Lift the back leg, straighten the front leg, stretching that hamstring in the front. Then the front knee and step the back foot forward. Uttanasana, releasing down. Bend the knees deeply, extending the arms alongside the ears, chair pose. Press the feet down to extend up and back. Exhale, palms together at the heart. Release and inhale, one final round. Exhale the palms together. Inhale the arms out, up, and back. Exhale to release forward. This time the left foot steps back first. Keep the left hand planted. Extend the right arm forward. 
twisting to the right, lifting the arm up. Feel the twist through the length of the spine, from the lower back through the entire length of the spine. Exhale to release that right palm down, downward facing dog. Inhale forward to plank. We'll hold just a little longer this time. So pressing back through the heels, even while engaging through the inner thighs. And feel that there's a spaciousness through the upper back, not over exaggerating it, but you're not collapsing there. It's strong, balanced, the palms are firm. Now all together, you can either lower knees, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. Coming forward, Cobra, or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Step the left foot forward, lunge. This time, extend the left arm forward, lengthen, and rotate upward, twisting. Exhale, down. The right foot steps forward, completely releasing. Extend the arms forward, out, up, pressing the feet down as you arch back. Exhale the palms together. Pause here. Take a couple breaths. Notice the heartbeat. Notice the pulse. Relax the arms. Notice the palms of the hands. A couple of standing postures now. If possible, in one fluid movement, step the left foot back, opening up the stance wide to the edge of the mat for some standing poses, starting with Trikonasana. Turning the right foot out 90 degrees. That left foot can come in slightly. Extend the arms. Start with the palms facing up. Extend the arms here parallel to the floor, and now turn the palms down, extend over that right leg as far as is comfortable, and then lower that right arm. Don't try to force anything, just wherever you naturally come. Have a breath, and then you can perhaps slide a little further down. You can use that right hand to press against the right ankle or leg and help to rotate the torso forward. Extending the left arm overhead and from here if the right hand's not down bring it down to the mat Bend into the right knee extended side angle firm legs firm uh, arms Strong through all the limbs here Pressing down through the right foot begin to lift the torso up Straightening the front leg lowering the back arm lifting the right arm stretching into the opposite side and releasing both arms, turning the feet forward. And now we'll move to the other side. The left foot turning out, the right foot turning in slightly. Again, with the palms lifting towards the sky, inhale the arms wide, parallel to the earth. And now, after having extended the arms, turn the palms down. Extend over that left leg. And when you're at full extension, lower that left hand down. Take a couple breaths to acclimate to this position. And you want the torso generally r rotating up towards the sky, bringing the chest forward. And with the lifted arm, simply by focusing on extending up, then there's space created for the torso to open a little further. Right arm coming overhead, good stretch. That back leg remains firm, solid. Now bending into the left knee, full extension here through the right side of the body. Notice the quality of breath. Let it be steady, full. Pressing into that left foot to lift up, straightening the front leg and windmilling the arms up, stretching into the opposite side here, and now lowering the arms, turning the feet forward, pausing.
with the feet wide still. You can actually slide them a little further wide, hands to the hips, exhale and release forward, pause halfway, lengthen the back of the neck, you can press down through the feet to remain steady through the legs and lengthen out a little more forward and then release the palms, come all the way down. See if the legs can remain firm while the torso completely gives in. Pressing down through the hands to re-extend the torso, lifting up all the way. You can step the feet together or hop the feet together. Turning the face forward once more. The feet can be about mat width distance with the toes pointing out 30 to 45 degrees and we'll come down into Malasana, the garland pose, palms together. You're welcome to stay here or if you can uh, comfortably follow along, release the palms down coming into Kakasana, the crow pose. The knees can find the back of the arms or even into the armpits. And notice the rounding in the spine here. This is uh, an, a good rounding here. You can lift the feet, perhaps balance on the hands, drawing towards the center line, the feet, the knees, you can even imagine the elbows and shoulders drawing towards the center line to help tuck in firm through the arms and with control releasing the feet down turning and lying in shavasana for a brief rest as you come into shavasana with the arms and legs apart see how quickly you can fully release have a deep breath in, holding. Open the mouth and exhale. <sighs> Softening all tension anywhere you may be prone to holding on. Let it go for now. Bending the left knee, placing that foot down. Extend the right arm overhead, rolling onto the abdomen. You can go ahead and bring the forehead down with the palms alongside the chest. Bhujangasana. Legs together or hips with distance apart. Exhale to completely release. Inhale to extend the head and curl up. Head, neck, and chest, drawing the elbows back the shoulder blades back, strengthening the upper back, helping our, our posture. Exhale down. Keep the hands as they are. We'll come up a second round. On the next inhale, re-extending, curling up. If comfortable, you can apply a little pressure down through the palms, keeping the sensation focused at the upper back. And then exhale all the way down, turning the cheek to one side, relax the arms and legs. Forehead returning to the mat, bring the arms all the way overhead. Legs here can be hips with distance apart. Extend through the left leg and right arm, reaching out. Inhale and lift up. Let the neck remain in line with the rest of the spine. Weight here is mainly on the abdomen. Exhale down. Other side, the right leg and left arm. Inhale, extend and lift. The extension here is just as important as the lift. Exhale down. We'll do each side once more. Fully exhale. And then on the next inhale, 
Extend right arm, left leg, lifting. Exhale down. Right leg, left arm, inhale. Exhale down. Arms alongside the body, cheek to the other side. Completely relax, legs apart. Bring the palms under the shoulders now. Begin to press up onto hands and knees. You can take your time and maybe wiggle a little through the low back if there's any tightness there. We'll come into a kneeling position preparing for the camel pose, Ustrasana. You may like a blanket under you if you have one available. You can lift onto the knees a, a high kneeling position. Hips over the knees. And to start with, we'll move a little dynamically here. So let's bring the hands to the low back to add awareness to that area. We won't come all the way back. Notice the tops of the feet pressing down into the mat here and the thighs pressing forward. We're going to bring the torso back as if we were moving into the full camel pose. Pause when you start to feel those muscles engage through the low back, through the core perhaps, and the thighs, and then press forward. Once more, coming back to you, start to feel a healthy amount of engagement so that it takes effort, but it's not strenu overly strenuous and forward. If you'd like to challenge yourself, you can release the arms and bring them overhead. Come back, reach that point, and then press forward. We'll do this two more times. Releasing back and forward. Uh, another option is hands at the heart. That's a fun option. You can help really to lift the heart as you release back and forward. And now you can release all the way back, bringing the hands to the back of the heels, lifting the heart, if comfortable, releasing the head. If not, keeping that chin tucked, pressing forward through the thighs. On the next inhale, lifting the torso, coming upright and then sitting the hips back over the heels. Pausing here in this neutral position. And then releasing the torso all the way forward. Child's pose. Extend the hands so the palms are at the front of the mat. Step the feet back, and we'll lift the hips to downward facing dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be moving into the pigeon pose. Inhale that right leg out and up. Bend the knee coming forward between the hands. Feel that there is a, a neutrality through the hips, through that pelvic area. Lift the torso up, and on the exhale, release forward. You may pause at the forearms. That's something I like to do in my personal practice. You may immediately come all the way down. Wherever you come to, work here on releasing, cultivating the qualities of a forward fold, letting the back muscles release, relax, a surrendering down. In this practice to energize, we want a true increase in energy, which is to say an energy that is sustaining, an energy that is lasting, that doesn't just fizzle away after a brief period. And so to that end, we want to maintain a balanced practice, even if it's a bit more vigorous, there still needs to be a harmonious balance in what we're practicing with our yoga.
You can aim to walk the hands back and lift the torso upright. Step the right foot back. You can give a little wag through the tail. Now lifting the left leg, inhale, exhale to bring the knee forward, placing it down. Check that the pelvic area feels neutral and balanced. And on the exhale, release the torso forward. Surrendering, relaxing, giving in. Every exhalation brings you a little more deep into a state of calm. Walking the hands back, lifting the torso. The torso is upright, stepping the left foot back, downward facing dog. Pause. Inhale forward into the plank pose. We'll hold here a couple breaths, strong legs. You can imagine the feet moving towards one another and the hands towards one another to help become aware of that center line through the body, the plumb line. Engaging the core muscles as if they were wrapping around the central line of the body. From here you can lower onto the forearms, one forearm and then the other, so the elbows below the shoulder. Now we'll lift back to the hands, breathing steadily. A little strengthening practice here. Once more down to the forearms. Even with the muscles engaged, it's possible to have a smooth and steady breath, even with full effort, full engagement. But now we can release the knees, come to a kneeling position. And we'll find an inversion practice today, but today we'll be practicing the dolphin pose. So this is normally taught as a preparatory practice for headstand. It's a, a very, uh, invigorating and strengthening practice and also has the qualities of an inversion. So very similar to what we were just practicing. Again, place the forearms down, shoulder width apart, palms uh, open, fingers wide. Step the feet back, lift the hips so it's like a downward facing dog position on the forearms. And be aware, be mindful of the space around the shoulders and the shoulder girdle area as opposed to sinking down and collapsing. Try to lift and expand. Try to find space there. The head can be neutral, the back of the neck in line with the rest of the spine. Legs are strong. Notice the hamstrings drawing back and up. There's options here. You can stay just as you are here. A nice pose to, pose to pack, practice in a static fashion. You can also inhale to come forward, gazing over the hands. Pause when the shoulders are above the elbows, and then press back. Exhale. You can do this on your own, inhaling forward and exhaling back a few times if you like. There is always the option to pause and be static here. It's rather strengthening to do so. If you've been moving dynamically, return back. And then we can all practice walking the feet forward a little bit, as far as is comfortable, and then back to the back of the mat. Working on keeping suppleness through the low back and the hips. 
general uh, healthy body dynamics, noticing what kinds of muscles help others engage, what's needed to move some parts of the body in order to main, maintain stability as we do so. And one final time, walk the feet forward and then back. Now releasing the knees once more. Sit back into child's pose, balasana, rest the forehead down. Walk the hands back to lift the torso. You can sit the hips to one side, extend the legs. We'll find a twisting practice here. We'll do something a little different that's not as common in our integral yoga practice. Bend the knees, soles of the feet down. You can draw the thighs towards the torso as much as is comfortable. Help maintain a, an erect spine. Inhale to sit tall. On the exhale, bring that left elbow to the outside of the right knee, that left, excuse me, the right hand coming behind for support. And you can feel the two legs moving towards the center line to maintain evenness and balance through the hips and legs. This is Pasasana. By feeling that sensation between the legs, it can actually help to continue to deepen into the twist. And provide sensation that the twist is starting from the base of the spine and really working up the entire length of the spine. Exhale and return to center now. Draw the thighs in once more, sitting tall. And this time release the left hand behind. Wrap that right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Can become a real full body experience. Sometimes there's a tendency to not be as aware of our legs and our twists. To let them be a little dead, but in this pose it really requires awareness through the entire body. Exhale, return to center. Finding a comfortable seated position. Legs crossed is preferred, but you're also welcome to sit in a kneeling position for yoga mudra. And we'll seal in all of this energy that we've stirred up in today's practice. This is truly a great way to let the body integrate the benefits, let even the deeper aspects of our being beyond our body integrate the practice. You can bring the hands behind the low back and clasp one wrist with the other hand. Inhale to lengthen up. Exhale to release forward. Forehead coming down to the mat. Inhale and slowly extend and lift the torso. Release the hands to the lap. Eyes closed or gazing down, observing how you feel. Hari Om.
this will conclude our video for today, but I would certainly recommend taking time to turn in line Shavasana, practice some relaxation here, a, a full yoga nidra if you have time, 10 or 15 minutes, um, as well as pranayama and meditation. That would be ideal if time allows, but at least to have a brief period of relaxation would be beneficial. I hope you enjoyed today's practice and we look forward to seeing you next time. Om Shanti.